What is it? It's like oh, the no. stock height to the top of the fender is like 28. Yeah, 28. And then, what do you think it'll get to? I think like 30. Yeah, you might be 30. That'd I be think cool. 30. I think 30 is kind of like an average or realistic. And number. then like, what's the gap on that? Like two to the tire. Two, yeah. Two and a half. Two. Yeah, like two to the just like cut like all of this off and it looks so much bigger. See so yeah, how they were sitting at what did we say the front was? It was like Oh, it was like this about one, twenty eight. Yeah, this was twenty eight. Yeah, it's the same. The gap's like two and a half. Two and a half, a little bit more in the rear, but yeah. that's because there's nothing back here. Ugh. It's like what? Uh, like nine and a half. Nine and a half to the bottom of your exhaust. Yeah, roughly. One sec. Yeah, I think like yeah. I think like a realistic number would be like two inches. Yeah, I'd say like, two. Yeah. Because like you said, like the wagon's already a little bit like bigger. What's it to the rocker? Like. Nine and a half. Sweet. So we're gonna be lifting the rear first. Uh, we're gonna be doing the Jeep lift. You've already seen what I just previously did with the specs and ride heights. So right here, it's got the Jeep spring compared to the factory spring. Um, pretty big size difference, as you can see there. And then for the factory uh, absorbers there, yeah, factory and then this is from a 99 f-150 pickup truck so the little holes there are actually the exact same so they'll line up perfectly I know some people run like adapters and stuff but this is a direct fit and then you see this one's like two inches longer let's see if we can get a tape up there it's like roughly yeah two inches and then this top mount will just get directly put onto there and that will help support the new longer stiffer spring I know some people you can run just the stock absorber but it just maxes it out so we went ahead with the brand new shock so it should be a little bit of a better ride there so yeah, we're just gonna get the tire off and uh, see how crusty it is on there alrighty so we got the top hat off of the factory uh, we got one already done what we did it was this bushing that sits on the inside there like this uh, we just cut it off the top part and that's what's kind of just, like just chilling in there so like just a slight bit. yeah we just got to cut it off right about there slide that in and then we got it mounted there so there's one f-150 shock and right now we're just looking at getting all the bolts off because they're pretty pretty crunchy you can see so but yeah that's what we're doing for the rear just using the existing top piece that slides onto the inside. That is so right about there. And then we're putting that, tighten it down. And that'll be the shock setup. And then we just use the factory bolt. And then the two bolts up there. Hopefully we can reuse them. And then, yeah, we'll put the springs in. I think we're for the bottom there. It'll sit nice. You can see how big of a, a gap there, there is. So they'll take up more of the room. See how the side has more open space. And then the top will just fit on that rubber bushing thing there. So, alrighty. Let me see if we get this stuff all out. Well, I'll update ya. So we got the rear shock absorber out. Uh, fun tip take these two bolts out and then take that bottom one out. We tried to do the bottom, but the, there's too much pressure. So it's angling it. But if we release the top pressure, they came out pretty easy, just using impact. That bottom bolt comes out like a breeze, so just a helpful tip. There you go. Now we're just gonna pry this down and get that shock out. Your spring is like... There we go! <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah, that was right in there. That was scary. Yeah. Now we're gonna use the spring compressor, compress the Jeep spring, and then we're probably just gonna throw like a zip tires or something on that. That way it's way easier to throw in there. So you don't have to get a, loosen that butt off, but yep. 
That's the plan. Clamp it down. All right, so after many failed attempts, um, what was happening was we couldn't get it enough and these were surpassing the top of it. So it was hitting, right? So we just hand bombed some zip ties on. We didn't like compress it too much. We just compressed it to whatever the zip ties in our hands could do. And then I just stood on top of this and it went in pretty easy. We have that rubber stop in and then it's just, I don't know, let's see. Yep, just chilling in the bottom there. And then for this bad boy, it's pretty easy. I just mounted the uh, the top in and then you can just simply, you can see it, you can just push it in and then it'll extend back out. So I'm just gonna zip the top tight then we'll brop the this in. Hopefully it's pretty easy. Looks like we'll have to raise it up, but you can simply just Put a jack under this, push it up in, and there we have it. So the top is nice and tightened down. And like I said before, just uh, jacked it up, do the bolt in it. You could, oh, let's see if I can. I do have spacers and stuff if you want. Should we throw washers in there? Yeah, here a little washer. Yeah, okay, we'll throw washers in there. Focus there. So yeah, I was sliding back pretty far, but now it's just got a little wiggle room. We put two uh, focus in there. One sec. There, yeah. It's in like two or like three more. Just put washing. some washers in there. A little play, but nothing much. So once we tighten it down, it should snug up. So yeah, it's just a tip. It might be a little loose, but throw some spacers or washers, and once we torque it down, it'll snug it up on both sides, and we'll be good to go. So the other side is down. Now for the official ride height, let's go. Creak. Jack is off. Jack. <laughs> that is sick. It might it might sink a little bit. Yeah, too. it'll settle a little it'll, bit. Yeah, it's gonna settle, right? Because those are new those are new struts. But like new there's a fist. <laughs> there we go. Got the men. What's that? I'd say that's what, like two inches maybe? We'll have to get the measuring tape out. We spec it all out, but. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's at least, yeah, at least a fist and a half. So like the rear wasn't yeah, too far fist, off from uh, what the front a was. Almost fist and a half. Almost fist and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's sick. Alrighty, so we're working on the front. Visibility is probably going to be poor just because the sun's shining, but we got that nut out. Came out pretty easy. Now we are just going to try to, uh, there's like a little gap in here. Let's see if I can get it. Probably not. Hold on a sec, let's try that. Uh, no, but there's a little gap here. We got to spread it. Make sure you disconnect these. Yeah, disconnect your, uh, one sec. Your uh, ABS lines there. Yeah, so right now we've uh, spray paid, uh, sprayed penetrating oil, and then we're gonna try to get something on the back to kind of gap it, and then we're just gonna call the muck it here with a hammer. Strut spreader tool. Yep. Goes from six mil to ten mil, I believe, or eight Once mil or something. Goes like, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So you put it in straight, and then you turn it. Uh, what was that? Ninety. Yeah. Gaps it, and then you. Smoke the knuckle, yeah, and it should pop out. And then you gotta loosen the top. That this, there, yeah. This nut you just gun off, and then this piece is what holds it to the engine bay. And then this is part of the strut assembly, and then the whole piece should fall out. Yeah, see, it's coming. Ooh, great success! Ah. Great success. I'm gonna make sure you have wires out of the way. You don't wanna break your flex line either. This is your brake line. Uh, you just wanna be careful with it. With your axle and your lower control arm and your sway bar attached, it's not gonna go too far. But, and then that's out, and then you just get it from the top, and then this piece comes out. So this is just like the side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, Jeep spring compared to stock. You can obviously tell there's more coils, and it's gonna be more stiff. So you know like when you jack up a car how it travels a little bit and before the tire comes off the ground and then like decompressing on the way down There's a lot of uh, 
you know, travel. travel. This is just gonna take that away, so it takes away the travel, get more stiff, and it won't settle down as far. And then with the top mounts there, you can see how many, how far down it goes on the threads there. And then we just did it six or eight, you know, sticking up there. It's not gonna go anywhere, but it's gonna give you more travel, more lift. So yeah, that's just like a side-by-side -side comparison. <clears throat> All you're gonna do is just get your spring compressors, press that down, take that top hat off, and then put it back together. This was done on a different date, or I would've showed you, so. I can kind of explain it. So this is your mount. This is what goes inside of the engine bay. There's a bearing inside of it that compresses against the top. And then there's this little flange here that holds the spring up against the bearing, allowing this to turn which when you turn your wheel, this is gonna turn and this will stay motionary. So this, if this bearing is shot or falling apart or if you, like I did once, try and delete the bearing, this will not work. When you turn your wheel, it will make a lot of noise and a lot of bad noises and a lot of bad things will happen. <laughs> um, you want this to move just a little bit. It's not gonna do a full turn or anything. It's just gonna slightly turn as you turn your wheel. Yeah, these are ready to get thrown in. There's the uh, matching side there. So we got one out, just chilling, you know, taking a little sweat break. This came out pretty easy. And then, yeah, hopefully it goes in as easy. You can kind of explain this too. So there's, uh, there's this little cover piece that sits on top. You'd pop this off. This nut holds this piece to your engine bay. And then there's a nut on top of it. This is what stops your strut basically from popping out of your engine bay and just letting your wheel flop around. So you'd have to take this nut off. I think it's like a 20 mil. You take this off and then your strut will literally drop and then you can pull it out from your knuckle and throw stuff around. <laughs> All right, so a little update troubleshooting thing. So as you can see, this top hat gets threaded on top and we did not leave enough tread, so we had to zap that nut down a little bit in order to allow for that to sit on with the nut. So yeah, just make sure you leave a nut, uh, enough tread sticking out that you can stick that nut on and secure that pretty good. So that's a little update there. So we uh, got the first one in. What we did is we put the top in first and then I just kind of stood on the assembly, compressing it down and it kind of slid in pretty easily. And then we obviously got jacked it up off the lower control arm there on the ball joint. And then you can see that it's in there. The bolt, see the hole right through. And then on the top, we got this tightened down. So it's basically flush with the top of the nut. So decently a good amount of tread on there. Shouldn't be going anywhere. We'll check on it from time to time. You don't have to go, like you can compress it down way more if you wanted to, but. I'm just going for the most lift here, yeah, so. Max amount of lift. So we're just kind of doing the bare amount. And yeah, we're gonna put these brake line, ABS lines back together. And then this side's done, it was pretty easy. Just make sure you spray some penetrating oil on there, makes life easy. Jigaloo. <laughs> Jigaloo. <laughs> and yeah, so we're gonna go ahead, tighten that nut up put the tire on and then repeat on the other and then you'll get the final uh, reveal, lowering it down and seeing how it settles and then we'll take it out for a drive and take some uh, before and after comparison little clips for you. Ready? Oh, Jack is off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that is a... That's a big boy. Holy so, shit. Jeez. Oh jeez. Yeah. I'm even gonna... I'm gonna need an alignment. Holy. Dude, there's so much more lift in the front. Very nice. Alrighty guys, well the lift is completely in now. Um, the only issue we did have, so the little update thing there. Um, remember when we left that nut a little bit closer to the top, trying to get as much travel as possible? Well, once we took it out, it started clanging and this was like way up, so you are gonna have to uh, torque that down nice and tight. So, 
that idea did not work. But other than that, this thing rides so smooth. And yeah, it did a pretty good job. I'm pretty happy with it. It's nice lift, good handling, good steering. I'll probably get an alignment, but for the most part, it ended up it turning up pretty good. So yeah, that's the update. I'll grab some before and after photos, but yeah. So we're just gonna go around. Um, I forget exactly what the measurements were before. I'll pop it up, but I think we did do a measurement from the ground to the muffler, which is now roughly, uh, see there was that 10 and a half, 11 inches off the ground. And then, um, the bottom of the wheel, it's like 30 inches to the top of the fender, the bottom, and then the, uh, come on. The new gap from the top of the tire to the well there. Sorry about that shade. Four inches. Four inches of clearance on the back. Um, from the rocker to the ground. It's like what? A foot? ish maybe a little less 11 inches it's pretty good um, the front from the bottom to the top now sitting at 30 30 and a half on um, the, the suspension in the front has a lot more um like suspension play so that's kind of why it sits higher like for example if I push on it more play and then the front is like four and a half inches from the top of the tire to the fender. So overall, we got a we got a big old lift out of this thing.